It's, it's kind of interesting because you have to flip when you're working your way up the ladder and you become kind of in that place where you can voice your leadership. You have to be able to transition from being the owner, the one who knows it all, to being able to delegate and to foster that ownership in the people who work for you. This, in my opinion, does not does not differ per gender, but it is something I wish that I had more kind of direction on when I was moving up in my career. Being a woman in just the marketplace in general, I always felt like I needed to be an expert. That was my my right in the room, was that I knew I could I knew better than all the men around me. And so when I got into leadership I struggled a bit giving that away mm -hmm. and knowing that I had a place in the room for a different reason. I'd say at that point the that changes by gender because I'll oftentimes uh, we feel as a women that we need to earn our place in the room and oftentimes my my uh, counterpart uh, men do not feel that same thing. But I would say that's one big thing. Uh, secondary trait is to not, and this is, this is not gender specific either, but take your values with you. Um, I have seen this go really poorly in both genders, but take your values with you. Uh, I know every single person in my team and I, we're growing so quickly that I actually don't know a lot of their teams and I have told them know them, know their one thing, why do they get up in the morning, who is their family, understand what their strengths are, their weaknesses and they'll figure out, you'll figure out how to grow them in a company. If you do that with your values then people will stick with you not just at your company but as a leader throughout your career. So I know my my team's partners I know the things that get them ticking that way like uh, I always like this example because it's very easy uh, there's a girl that I've worked with historically she needed to run uh, five miles a day that was her thing she needed to leave and take that hour or whatever and do her five miles if you booked over that she was done for the day you messed with her mentally my point is take that as a metaphor like understand what everyone's thing is on your team and optimize towards that I feel like leaders that don't look at their team as human beings and really factor in that, that value, I, that's a big miss in leadership. Um, the, I mean, I could go on and on. I'm obviously really passionate about this, but I also would say in that same kind of angle, uh, for me, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is really important to me. Um, no, it doesn't matter what my peer group's opinions are. I'm going to make sure that my team reflects my values. So I guess the, the more direct answer to you there is don't look to another leader to help you lead with your values. So my team is very diverse and of course the entire company of Curve is, but I, I'm not going to let other, you know, my counterparts, you know, be, be the excuse or lack, you know, opposite of, of what is important to me. So uh, our, our operations and innovation department at Curve is more than 50% women. Um, we're based in Texas, so we have a large Hispanic population. We have, I mean, it's very, very diverse, and that's because it was important to me. Uh, and so that, I would give that advice to any other leader that make it important to you and don't just look for your peers or your company to make it important. Like, you make it happen.